We just learned this week that Hollywood's on strike, but apparently Alabama didn't get the memo. <laughs> get ready, folks. Juicy Smollett Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. That and the question, is Black YouTube becoming more like Big Pharma? Let's talk about it. Welcome back, family. This is the I Said What I Said show, your one-stop shop for reactions, relationships, and real talk. I'm your host, That Ball Brother. Now, when I first heard about Carly Russell and the story behind what was going on, the, on, the first thing that stood out to me was the fact that there was a child wandering on the highway in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. And we're not talking about just any old child. We're talking about a white child. Okay? So that right there was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is there a white child wandering the streets, a two or three year old on a major highway walking back and forth at night? And she just happens to be the one to spot this child. Nobody else driving by saw a child, but OK, whatever the case. All right. So Miss Russell told investigators she got out of the vehicle Thursday to check on the child. You notice they haven't said that it's a white child. And the man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed, he said. According to the chief, Russell told police the man made her go over a fence and then she was forced into a car. So he picked her up, he carried her to a fence, put her down and said, now you go over that fence. Now, meanwhile, where is the toddler? Where is the child? And all this hustle and bustle of getting you over to the fence. The next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was, was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She claimed she was blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. Remember that. I, I highlighted it for a reason. She said they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. Russell told police the next day she woke up and the woman fed her cheese crackers and played with her hair. The chief said Russell told police she was able to escape after being put back in the vehicle. She said she ran through the woods before coming out near her home. But there's an 18 wheeler parked out somewhere out near her, out near where she lives as that's, that's, that's abducting folks. But all right. Let's continue. Russell came home around 10.45 p.m. Saturday, returning on foot, according to Hoover police. Authorities said she was taken to, the, to a hospital, treated and released. The detectives went to speak to her again. The family has stated to us that they didn't think that her that in her mental state right now, because of trauma of the incident, that she's not ready to talk. Her parents went on NBC today and played their case. And she definitely fought for her life. There were moments when she physically had to fight for her life. And there were moments where she had to mentally fight for her life. The reason I highlighted those things, they were interesting to me because in the beginning, her captors were so concerned about leaving bruise marks on her from tying her up. But it's some, but there were multiple occasions where she had to physically fight against them. Yet, none of the thing in her story indicates that she fought anybody back or resisted in any kind, any kind of way and tried to get away other than she escaped. But how did she escape? Is that when she fought? Is that way to assume that? So again, there's just so many things wrong with this story. Now, police were able to go through her search history and found a few interesting nuggets of information that might be a little relevant to this case. On July 11th, there was a search for if you have to pay for an Amber Alert. Gee, I wonder why you would be looking for that. On Thursday, a search about a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville, Tennessee. On Thursday, a search for how to take money from a register without getting caught. Why would you be looking for something like that unless you're looking to commit a crime? On Thursday, a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction starring Liam Neeson. The chief said, I do think it's highly unusual on the day someone gets kidnapped that they're researching on the internet and Googling the movie Taken about an abduction. I find that very strange. Well, Chief, we all find that strange because there's absolutely no reason to be doing any of those things if you're if you have no if you have no ill intentions of being involved in your own abduction. You know, there's a saying, uh, everything is a remix. And 
here we are all over again. This is Juicy Smollett 2.0. Now, apparently she didn't get the memo that that kind of shit don't fly. Folks are, are smarter about that kind of stuff and are watching out for those kind of foolishness and on top of it right away. So she figured she could pull this game and figure out fit and figure she could get one over. And as we look more into what the internet's showing us, apparently she was on some kind of get back tour. Is that what this is about? Because of her boyfriend or trying to make him jealous or something? Look, at the end of the day, we got to stop. We got to stop. This kind of behavior only affects people that really are going through something. It makes it hard enough for people to come forward and report any issues that they're dealing with to the law enforcement for fear of any kind of judgment or retribution. But when you pull these kind of shenanigans, if I'll give you, if this is all shenanigans, we're still trying to figure all this out. Right. But if you pull these kind of shenanigans and are wasting public resources that could be doing other things like searching for a three-year-old child wandering on the street, if that's really what was going on, then that's a problem. We have to stop weaponizing the justice system like and treating it like some kind of toy that, well, when we when we get angry with somebody, we want to make a trump up false charges or create fi fictitious events that, that, that are happening and make unnecessary drama for no reason. And now I'm going to circle back now to uh, Hollywood because I blame you too. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, you name it. You people keep putting out these movies, telling folks that it don't take nothing to just go out here and disappear yourself and no one finds you. Okay. Gone girl. Uh, all those movies like that taken. Look, people, those are just movies. That's not how things work in real life. If you go missing, it's a lot more involved in trying to figure out your whereabouts and just chalking it up to a happiness chance. And some dude comes swinging through somebody's house window and saves your ass. That's not how it works in real life. You got to put the phones down and stop living in these fantasy worlds, thinking that this is how, oh, if I can just, I can just do all this. And if I Google it and look it up, no one's going to find out that I looked it up online first. There's been plenty of cases this year and last year alone, as you can say, where people have, well, the first thing they say is we went through the internet search and found all this, that, and the third, looking for ropes and chains and whips and clips. You got to pay attention, folks. This is not how things work. Police work is serious business. Criminal activity, criminal investigations are not taken lightly more times than not. And they will get to the bottom of, of the situation. And it's going to be embarrassing if you're if you're big, if you're full, full of crap. I hope for this child's sake that she's not playing games. You know, and all signs point to this is this not being a legitimate situation. And I gotta call bullshit when I say bullshit. Now the question is: if this is all a hoax. What exactly does young Miss Carly face? Well, if we go back to what happened with Juicy Smoulet back in the day, end of, he ended up getting felony convicted for disorderly conduct and lying to police. So I don't know. Miss Carly might be facing a little bit of jail time behind something like this if it comes to light that this is all a bunch of crap. And anybody who was involved to help further this hoax is going to be considered accessories of the crime. So y'all might get a little jail time too. So stay tuned. Let's see how things play out. So next up, I have a question. Is black YouTube becoming like big pharma? I was watching a uh, live stream the other day by the lovely Courtney Michelle who had Mr. Logic uh, on there. And they were discussing the topic about how the space is now transformed because of the red pill uh, content or the increasing number of red pill content that the space has become not only oversaturated, but it seems to be very focused on making sure people feel good in their trauma and not really offering a lot of solutions. Let's take a listen. Pretty much the video you guys haven't seen is me pretty much disassociating myself from the red pill. I think that it is harmful and you know, I got a lot of pushback because a lot of people was like, well, you know, the red pill helped me and helped me. And I'm like, well, when did it help you? Is it helping you now? Is the content that you receiving really helping you or still funneling your 
distaste, dislike for a whole group of women that honestly, everybody and all of us are not the same. And if it's the red pill talking about anything about building, about therapy, about healing, or just about hatred? That's a very good question to ask. You know, a lot of this content that you see out here is, you know, out to bash each other, men bashing women, women, ba women bashing men. But it really doesn't serve anything. Would it, how does it help further the community if we stay at odds? Right. And the fact that not many people really see that that's the that's the end game, because the longer that we're divided as a community, the easier it is to infiltrate and manipulate. See, we got to stop allowing people that don't, aren't part of our community coming in and disrespecting us from the outside in. And also, we got to start weeding out folks from the inside out. You know, the old saying, all, all skin folk ain't kin folk. That plays a factor here as well. But then there was this thing, you know, I kind of, as I watched the video, I started thinking to myself, not because of anything she said in particular, but just thinking outside of the box, I don't know that we want to change. I honestly feel like, you know, a lot of us are just content to stay in our victim mindset, wallow in misery and pain and don't bother. Cause it's easier, as I've said in other videos, it's easier to point the finger at somebody else and say, you know what, it's your fault. I didn't do anything wrong, it's all on you. There's a lack of accountability and I keep harping on this. There is a severe lack of accountability in our community because it's everybody's fault but ours. At some point in time, you gotta look at the man in the mirror, Michael Jackson, and say, okay, maybe I'm contributing to this issue. Maybe I'm contributing to my own situation. Because when you think about it, it comes down to choice, right? Who do you allow in your space and who gets your energy and time? If you if you allow negativity, if you, in, if you give space and opportunity to toxicity, then you are complicit in the actions and the, and the results that you get. You may not want to hear that, but it's true. But let's continue. Yes, and I said... The red pill is like big pharma. It's a pill that people are taking not to heal themselves, but to pacify themselves. And that's not healing. It's making you feel good in your trauma and in your hurt. Uh, now, everybody, be honest. It became now more of a business for profit than it is to be proficient in whatever you're dealing with. I didn't see it myself. You didn't saw, you probably heard me say the same thing myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like Big Farmer became more about profit than healing. Correct. And yeah. what we said now, you got channel upon channel upon channel. It's now it's a competition about who can say the most egregious shit ever. It's about money. It's not about these principles. Now, don't get me twisted. From the start, it could have been something different. It could have been. So, and then let me clarify, is you, you, you saying before or you saying what is that present? Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm saying is right now, because right now. when I, two years ago, when I entered into this YouTube space, how yeah. I supported it. It got to a point now where it's not about healing or fixing the situation. It's now becoming a business. Right. And if you disagree with her from saying that, because if you got big pharma, go from actually want to put out medication to, to heal people to now turn in profits. And you know, he's absolutely right. There was a time when the space was supposed to be about healing, talking about solutions, figuring out what to do, how to be better men, how to be leaders in the community. But we live in a society now where everything's about stimulation. What are you going to do to entertain me? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me instant gratification. I got my phone in my hand attached like a third appendage. I'm looking for the next funny moment, scrolling through, trying to find something at last that's going to get, get me laughing. I can't stay on a channel, a, a video for longer than five seconds, or I'm going to move on to something else. And people are capitalizing on that fact that all we want is to be entertained. We're not interested in change. When I'm interested in, in upward mobility, it sounds it's, it's sexy to say that, you know, but the truth isn't sexy. The work that's going to it's going to take to get our community back on track. Well, not that it was necessarily on track 100 percent from the word jump, but still the work that's going to be required isn't going to be sexy work. 
is not going to be entertaining work. You have to pour into the youth. That's where you got to start. Because most of us are at the age where you just we're just in a set in our ways. You got to pour into the youth, get them out of the phones and back into the real world and dealing with real things. Legislation that Miss Elijah talks about later on in the video, where he's saying that you have to black folks have been told to ignore politics, just go Democrat and just do whatever they say. You need to pay attention to what's going on. You know, there are a lot of things happening in this world that are that are are monumental changes that you do, that, that are being swept under the rug because we're focusing on who's twerking the hardest or in this video or who's acting a damn fool in the buy. You got to pay attention. You don't you can't you, you're getting angry with the wrong people. And Mr. Logic makes the point later on in the video where he says that, you know, you, you're angry with women. Some of these men are angry with women because of X, Y and Z. But. It's the laws that allow these particular women to abuse that privilege and then hamstring and 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 and, and inflict pain and, and um unjust activity on men, some men anyway. But that's the, but his to his point is that you have to work from the pol political angle. You can't focus on getting mad with Becky and and, and Julie and Bunquisha and La, and Laquita on the corner. You have to take an active role in your community to figure out how to better change the laws to make them better more balanced not to skew them the other way because we're not looking for that either but find balance find justice but going back to courtney's point with it being like big pharma like it the the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want us well i don't mean us as black folks us as human beings if we get well they're out of business and the same applies to this particular space in black YouTube, that the longer we stay angry with each other, the longer we keep fighting with each other, the more hatred we we stir up and keep stir and keep manifesting, the longer and harder and more difficult it's going to be to come together as a community. And I feel like that's really the, the major issue that we have to face with. You know, we can't, it's okay to be entertained. No one's saying that being entertained is a wrong, is a bad thing. But I don't desire being entertained at the expense of my sisters, at the expense of my brothers being attacked or, or spoken or talked ill of or sisters being degraded and mistreated. I don't find that entertaining. I don't want to keep I don't want to see that. And, you know, in the, later in the video, they start talking about solutions or ways to fix the problem. Well, you can't stop the people that are producing the videos. That's their choice. But. What you can do, what we can do, is we get to decide what we give our attention to, as I mentioned earlier. If you decide that you're not going to give this these people their, their attention, they're going to have to change. It's just like the stock market. The market will change if people's purchasing shifts. If you're buying, you have, we have buying power. And if we start going to channels that are promoting awareness, mental health, self-care, being encouraging, motivation, uh, educating our youth, teaching men how to how to lead, the market will shift. But we, as the consumer, have to shift first. Problem is that we want to be quick to push it. It's not my problem. I don't want nothing. Don't. I mean, I'm in my little box right here. Don't mess with me. Leave me alone. I just want to be entertained. And that's never going to be the solution to solving our problems in the community. So we have to ask ourselves: When is enough enough? I was watching another video some time ago. Uh, shout out to Alan Obi when he made a quote, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase the quote, but I'll say it this way: "The world is a shit show, and we all got a front row seat, and we're all trying to find a soundtrack to listen to while the world burns." Where do you stand in all this fight? What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue to allow our community to burn? Or we're going to take the steps necessary to come together, work together to do, to build better. We can't change the past. We're here now. What can we do to go forward? Let me know in the comments your thoughts about this. I appreciate you taking time to roll with a brother again. And if you enjoyed this video, check these out where we continue the conversation. Until next time, I said what I said.